What you're looking at is the user interface for the particle selector. It has an add to main button which takes the particle being shown and adds it to the main user interface above. In order to make this more uh, convenient, we've provided a selection for none in the or meta favorite which will provide a 3D box with no particles in it. That will allow you to, uh, when you add to main, it will provide a single particle representation as you can see here is the electron. A clear all button will basically remove any particles that you've selected from the display above. The, uh, there's three different sets of user interfaces here. One for individual particles, one for mesons, two particle systems, and baryons, three particle systems. Now each particle in this entire model can be selected from this row of options. Uh, if you want it to be an antiparticle, it will show those. If you want it to be a particle type of type 1 or 2, that basically differentiates, for example, the electrons from the neutrinos. Or, in a different row of quarks, it will differentiate the up from the down. Now, in this row, there are also the weak and strong forces, the Higgs forces, as well as those excluded particles in the fifth row. Now, any given particle set will may or may not have color, spin, or generation. So, for example, the quarks have all of those, so you can select green, or blue, or red. You can have a generation of generation 1 or 2, where the particle gets bigger. Generation 3 is even bigger. And the different spins will change the shade of the particle. Now the strong and weak particles are, don't have spin, so those buttons are disabled. They do have color and they will change. You can see this display is the same as what would show up as the uh, tooltip box in the upper display. Now if you want to calculate more information, which will slow it down, you can sh check the show more data box and you will see that uh, this will provide the possibility that there are um, some indifferences that equal the same charge configuration or E8 uh, position. So for this one there don't happen to be any but if we select for example a third generation quark it should come up with a list of a pairs that provide a sum or difference. If it's an antiparticle, it'll be a difference. And as you can see, this list now comes up. Now what's interesting about this list is it will show you the symbol and the coordinate, but it will also allow you to select uh, yes for showing it in the above display, or no to absolutely not show it. The question mark will be there depending on whether it was selected in the filtering UI in the main window. So as we add these particles to the main, we'll go up to the top and see how that changes the main display. And in a few seconds it will show four particles. And you can rotate zoom and kind of analyze the relative positions in this model of these particular particles. The second tab for mesons shows a two particle selection environment where you can select the antiparticle or the particle and it will display a graphic representation of those particles that are selected. You can select the color and spin of each individual particle. 
And if you want to show more data uh, representing the various combinations of particles that have the same quark makeup, um, clicking the More Data selection will do that for you. The third window uh, for baryons is the same, except it has a three particle selector, uh, one for each color, and spin selections are available. And the data also shows all of the baryons that are of the same quark makeup. The atomic element selector shows each element in the mouse over. It has a selection for isotopes. By clicking on an element, such as hydrogen or helium, which are really the only interesting ones from a theory of everything model, it will put each particle that is involved in that element into the upper display. selecting as many spins and colors as possible to represent the various multiple neutrons and protons quarks. There are several interesting representations of the periodic table, such as the ball display, or the 3D where you can spin and visualize that in three dimensions. XY plots, where you f when you select various axes data, it will actually show you the different representations of all of the data representing the elements. What we're seeing now is a plot list. It has information such as the sequence number of the particle, the symbol, its shape, a bitwise representation of the particle parameters, which include the generation bits, a single uh, bit for the particle type, two color bits, two spin bits, and an anti-bit. There are binary coordinate representation, which will be zeros and ones, E8 coordinates, which will be uh, plus or minus one half, plus or minus 1 or 0, and the physics coordinates, which is the rotation of the E8 coordinates. Also interesting to note is the display particle options for allowing a particle to forcibly be displayed on the model, or force it to not be displayed with a no. The question mark is optional based on the filter set that is being selected in the main user interface.